Our second presenter that I'm delighted to introduce, and our second presenter is uh, Linda Lopez from Radkas University. And I am pleased to have her present course uh, templates, consistency, and flexibility, which actually goes very well with the previous topic of this session. And uh, during this presentation, please use live Q&A to ask questions uh, of the presenter. At the end of each presentation today, there will be a short survey displayed. Any feedback you can provide is greatly appreciated. Uh, Linda, uh, welcome, and uh, very glad to see you again. And please, uh, you're on, it's your time now. Thank you very much. Uh, well, welcome to this presentation from the Rutgers School of Public Health on how we are using course templates to create consistency while still being flexible. My name is Linda Lopez and I'm the e-learning support specialist at the Rutgers School of Public Health. I work with faculty, excuse me, to create asynchronous courses and I also help develop the online asynchronous program. In this session, I will speak on how course templates create uniformity and structure to our courses, how they streamline the course building process for instructors and allow students easy access to course content. I will touch upon how we came to share our templates into Canvas Commons and what Commons is and, what is, and how it works. Um, I will ask that you kindly allow me to answer questions at the end of the presentation so that I won't lose where I am. Um, so here we go. Um, the idea for creating asynchronous online courses for SPH began in 2017. And Dr. Marian Pesanante, Associate Dean for Educational Program Development was put at the helm. She immediately began working on creating the first course with the help of faculty. And by the summer of 2018, the course was taught and the program was on its way. I came on board uh, to push forward future asynchronous courses. Throughout the process, it became obvious that not all courses are built the same and not all courses contain the same information. Once our core courses were up and running, Dr. Pasanante, along with Dr. Laura Liang, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, determined that something had to be done to give a more cohesive and accessible format to the courses. In 2019, we began having discussions and brainstorming sessions with Kat Karen Harris, instructional designer from Teaching and Learning with Technology, and Justin Smith from the New Media Center, trying to come up with a branding look for the template. Then COVID came along um, and everything changed. We had a focus into transition all our courses to online. Once things had settled down, Dr. Pasanante uh, asked that I create an, ace, an asynchronous course template and a synchronous course template as well in Canvas. I began this task by re reviewing the asynchronous courses that were being taught. I looked at how each course was formatted in Canvas, what content was being shared with students to note if essential information was or was not being provided. And I looked at the ease with which I could find and access the material within the courses. I basically compared the courses and tried to create templates that would contain essential information and standard course information that can be used throughout all of the courses. Once I created the drafts of the templates, there were multiple emails and meetings with Dr. Pasanante, Dr. Liang, and Ms. Harris. And together we decided what revisions needed to be made. We wanted the templates to be user-friendly and provide the resources that students would like to have available in their courses. With this in mind, I met with, with a group of students from the different concentrations to look to learn what they liked or what they thought of the asynchronous template. The meeting was very favorable and the students had, a great, had great things to say about the template. They love the start, the starting point of a home page with a welcome message, a small brief of the course, 
course material information and a picture of the instructor. They liked the separate syllabus page and how it was formatted with tabs, making it easy to access the different areas within a syllabus. They liked what I call informational modules. These modules contain essential information about Canvas, standard resources information, policies, and much more. These informational modules resonated with the students who found them to be useful to the extent that one student even suggested they be embedded in the Canvas software itself as she was concerned that the faculty would not include them in their courses. Overall, they appreciated the fact that the template would bring some similar features to courses across the board. We wanted to make sure or wanted to see what other people thought of the template. At both Dr. Pesanante and Leanne's suggestion, I met with the administrative assistants from the different concentrations. These meetings were also met with favorable feedback. The administrative assistants appreciated the consistency, clarity, and flow from item to item. Emails were sent to the faculty, letting them know of our work in creating Canvas course templates, and meetings were scheduled. We met with the faculty and shared the templates with them. We, they were informed that, they, that we anticipated rolling out the templates in summer 2020 with the option to use them in fall 2020, and they would be required starting spring 2021. We emphasized this would not uh, restrict their creativity. Instructors will still be able to use the content they wanted and how they wanted to use it. The purpose of the templates was very, is, was about streamlining some aspects of where general content was placed and how courses looked in Canvas. We explained that templates would be easy to use. The templates reduce the time it takes to build courses from scratch. Templates provide a way to organize information and content. They allow instructors to focus on creating learning content and also allows them as well as students to navigate courses easily. Although there were some concerns expressed, overall, the faculty understood that the templates would create a more cohesive overall look and layout across all courses. Those instructors who began using the template in fall 2020 mentioned that having pre-formatted, pre-populated items made it less stressful as they did not have to concern themselves where content had to go. Those instructors who had to build courses from scratch liked the idea or the foundation that the templates created, which allowed them to have more time to create content, research, and gather material to add to modules. For those instructors who were new to Canvas and or Rutgers, having a template gave them a sense of relief. They didn't have to worry about learning everything that Canvas can do all at once. Now let's turn our attention to comments and why it is nice to share. At Ms. Harris's suggestion, it was determined that the templates should be shared in Canvas Commons. For those of you who don't know about Commons, it is a learning repository where educators can search for content, share their own content, and import content into a course. Comments can be found in the global navigation menu in Canvas. In this case, it can be shared on Commons. Open the template you want to share, click on settings and click the share to comments button. Then fill out the required information and share your resource. As you can see, you, you can decide who can use the resource. You choose how to share the resource in your own terms. You edit the pre-populated title, provide insight into what you are sharing. You can provide ads to make it easy to, uh, tags, excuse me, to make it easy to find and pick an image and select the grade level recommendation. You will then see it in Commons ready to be imported. Now the steps for importing a template into a sandbox or a live course site are just as easy. From the home page of a course, click on the import from Commons button. The Commons window will open from here 
click on the filter button and search for the group where the templates are in. In our case, it is the School of Public Health. Once the button is clicked, the resources shared with the group will appear. The instructor will select the template, select the course from the list that opens, and hit the import download button. A message will indicate that the template has been successfully imported. All the instructor has to do is open their course and begin using the template. Now, making changes to a template is easy. When the creator of a template makes up updates, they can very easily share the changes in comments. Those who have imported the template prior to the update will receive a notification and they will have the option to update the change in their course. In closing, I wanted to give you a quick listing of the benefits for using templates and sharing resources and comments. Templates help streamline the entire course building process, saving instructors time and stress. Templates control the overall look and layout of course, of course sites. They provide the framework that bring together common modules and items in Canvas. They provide consistency and clarity across, across courses, which helps create unity across the school. They allow easy access for both instructor and student and are easy to update to meet technical and instructional requirements. Now, why it's nice to share in Commons? Well, Commons allows you to share content with who you want. It keeps the original. You're simply sharing it. You can make changes and share them immediately. And it's not a personal filing system, but it is a handy backup. Sharing is fast and is easy. You build a tailored digital library. And lastly, sharing courses, learning material, and educational content helps to build a community. I thank you for your time. I can answer some questions now. And I could also, if you wish, could take you to one of the templates and show you what, what we've created. A little bit more time you have about uh, um, like seven minutes so if you like to do that that'll be great sure let me I believe I may have to stop sharing one moment but then I'll pop back in um, give me and I'm hoping that you can see my screen um, I am going to show you the asynchronous template so the, these, these are the two templates that were created originally. This is the asynchronous and synchronous. They're basically both the same with just minor differences. Okay, so this is the asynchronous and this is the homepage that I mentioned that students found uh, that they really liked. We were noticing that some instructors had the tendency to put the syllabus immediately. And so when a student popped into their course, it just hit them in the face. There was nothing to, you know, sort of wel welcome So we decided to create a welcome page. We, we asked that you create a brief message, description of the course, give a, a, what kind of format is being used. Is it a, a asynchronous or a hybrid? For the synchronous template, we have face-to-face -face or uh, right now my mind just <laughs> uh, went blank, but it, it, it's just that's where you will see the difference in the uh, synchronous template. Uh, we asked the instructor to put a picture of themselves and give small information, basically uh, their title and their name, because they will have an opportunity in one of the other modules in the informational modules that I mentioned to give more detailed information, um, and which we suggest because it allows the instructor and their teacher's assistant to give more of a personal background about themselves, which brings interest to the course and allows students to engage with that instructor. Uh, there's an area where you would put the course or textbook information. We suggest also adding the ISB number for a textbook and so forth. If there is no textbook, you just uh, put a statement such as required reading materials will be available on Canvas. We also suggest for especially the asynchronous uh, because students, as you know, can uh, get on and basically uh, learn their uh, course material at any time, but if they have a small video from the instructor telling them what would be best, how to start best, or or uh, even if 
there isn't a video, maybe some sort of text letting them know where they should start or, or what should they focus on. There is the Canvas help information. We, we determined it should be immediately available in the home page because many times students don't know that they can click on the help or they just don't notice button. And then so, but it's here available and here is a getting started. I'm going to take you to the modules, the informational modules. Uh, the very first one is a small resource module that we have created for the instructor himself. It's always kept on published because the students don't need to see this. It just contains uh, uh, resources that we've created or that are uh, that have been created through Rutgers Canvas or through Canvas itself, the parent company instructor. So there are various links and information here. And then these are the um, modules that students will see. The Getting Started module, it has just their orientation. And this is where I mentioned where an instructor may want to add an in-depth information about themselves or a hobby, or if you're working on a research and you find, you know, you tell students about it, students become interested and they might ask you to learn more about it. So this is what we're saying, you know, at the homepage, just a quick picture and your email and your name, that's fine. But here, build a little bit more and give them a little bit more. Then um, the same, it could be if you have a course assistant and this is where uh, we have just a small discussion where students, because they think we're trying to build a uh, a community, we ask students to introduce themselves. Um, then the next one is Course Essentials. And Course Essentials has Canvas tools information, the uh, support services, um, writing material, writing support, uh, the main library, and also the School of Public Health library, other information. As you can see, policies are all here that students should know. And so we included the, them there. And then this is just a sample. We also provided sample of what perhaps a module can contain. Um, these first three even have a, a sample of what perhaps you wanna set it up once you open the item. So for example, here, you would include the topic a small overall um, paragraph, the objectives of that week or that module, and either you can create a list that students can follow of what they can do or have a activities table with uh, links to the different sections or assignments from uh, that particular module. We have that there. And then the next item I'm just going to hit next is readings and videos. You, when you have a chapter or an article or journal that a student is to uh, read, we ask, you know, we ask them to place it here. Uh, the same with videos. And what we mean is videos, uh, if you have a YouTube video or if you have uh, a TED Talk video, that's great, put it here. And then the next one is lectures. Um, if you're recording a lecture, we ask that you put it here. It's different than an educational uh, media. Lectures are what you record. And we ask our instructors to provide transcripts and slides. If there aren't any transcripts, let's say you speak off, cough, off the cuff, we'll give uh, bullet points. These are all things that make your learning material accessible to students and helps them study, helps them learn. So these are the three major modules that uh, we consider are very helpful, or I mean, excuse me, these uh, are the items within the learning or educational module, not the, the informational modules, that we find are very important for students to have. Some of you might be thinking, well, you can add all of this in one page, but if you, think about it, if we were to add all of the three items within one page, the student has to scroll, 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 scroll continuously down. And that was the purpose also of why we did make sure that people understood or instructors understood to use the syllabus item in the menu. And we created- Linda, we have four minutes. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, if you have any questions, but here is the syllabus and you can see there has tabs where students can just click and go to that particular section of the syllabus. If there are any questions, I will be more than glad to answer. I don't think we have a question, so you can just uh, provide with your, you know, final advice no. notes, wrap it up. Good. Well, basically, I will just finish up and just, uh, you know, we the same, like I was saying before, uh, uh, instead of having a syllabus that runs continuously, that the student has to continuously scroll down, uh, we created tabs that provide easy access, quick access to each section of a syllabus. And um, that's it. Um, this is again, the homepage. And as I mentioned before, the synchronous template um, is the same, except it's just a few things. It doesn't contain, there is no need for a navigation video because you are either meeting face-to-face -face or at the same time online or through Zoom or WebEx or whatever you're using. Um, and uh, some of the items within the modules, this the educational module are different because you don't need to have discussion because discussion you will have face-to-face -face or when you're on WebEx and Zoom. Um, so I thank you very much for your time. I think I still have some time and um, that's it. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, Alan, maybe you can pop me back in the main room for a second. Uh, Linda, thank you so much. It was a wonderful presentation with a lot of uh, great insights. And we definitely appreciate you sharing your experience, how you went through transition and how decisions were made. Uh, who did you get to work with uh, during that time? So I appreciate that. I'm sure our uh, attendees will find it useful. We well, thank you and I hope you continue enjoying uh, the rest of the conference, everybody. Thank you again for uh, being here. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye, Linda. Bye-bye, everyone.